Hi everybody, I'm Peggy Bridges and I teach marketing and computer applications at David Prouty High School. Today I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use Google Slides. Okay, to start with, you can open Google Slides from your Gmail email account. If you go up to the top and you click on the waffle that's in your upper right corner, and just go down to choose Google Slides. And this is the screen that will open. These are previous presentations you may have worked on. You can use templates up here, or you can just click here to create a blank presentation, which is what we're gonna to do today. So this is the opening screen that you get when you enter Google Slides. You have menu items at the top here, and you have a toolbar with several different options here that we're gonna look at in a few minutes. And then you have themes at the right. If you click on any theme, it's going to automatically apply it to your entire slideshow. But you can do other things where you can avoid having the theme template controlling the content and you can place things more where you want them instead of where the theme is going to put them. So a couple of ways to do that um, are going to be to first start by viewing the slide master, which is kind of creating your own template. So you're going to go up to the view option in your menu and click that. When you're going to go down here, you're going to click on master, view master. So while you are in here, this is now showing you a template for all the different types of layouts that you can choose. The best way to start is to be clicked on your very first one that says master at the top left. And you can click in each of the text boxes and set your font style, color, etc. for each level, or you can select them all if you want. What I'm going to do first here though is I'm going to customize my background and you go up here to your toolbar. You can see the item background here. If I click it, it allows me to make changes to the background and here under color, I can click on the arrow and I can choose one of these solid colors or a theme color. I can also click on gradient, which sometimes gives the background a little more visual interest. And I could click on any sort of a color or gradient I want. Uh, let's say today we try uh, this bluish one. So this is a radial gradient. It's going from the center outward. And then if I've chosen that, I can just click on done. And now you see it has applied it to all of the slides in my slideshow. So the next thing I'm looking at here is you always want your text to be easy to read on whatever background you have. And I'm thinking that a light white text might look better. So I'm gonna click here in this text box, it selects it all. And I'm gonna go up here to my font color button, which is right here, text color. I'm gonna choose the white and then I'm also going to say I want this to be bold and I think I'll increase the size a little bit. I can click in the list and just choose something bigger. It's at 28 now, so I'm thinking maybe 30 might be a little bit better. Um, and then I can also change the font style. If I don't like what's there, I can click here and I can choose something a little bit different. Let's say I want this font instead. Then I can do the same thing with my bullet items down here. I can just set the first one or I can try to select all of them. I'm really not going to use more than the one but bullet level here. So I think for that one, I would just probably leave the font the same, but I want to change the font color to match my title. So I'm going to leave that there and I want to go back to my slideshow now, so I want to exit the slide master. And to do that, I go over here in the left column, and I just click on slide one, and it brings me back. And now I'm back in my slideshow. Um, from here, 
you can add slides by clicking on insert in the menu and going down to new slide right down here and it will automatically insert a slide and it's going to assume a layout that you want but if you want to change that layout you can click here and choose any other type of layout that you might want. I think for now I'm just going to leave this here and if you have a text box appearing on the slide and you don't want it you can always just click on make your mouse right on the line of where the text box is and if you click your delete key or your backspace button it will get rid of that text box and give you a little more freedom to put what you want on the slide if you want to then add your own slide you can always go up here there is a text box here I can click it and I can just drag make my own text box and type what I want in there but if you do this after the fact then you've lost your template settings so you would then have to go back and reset your font style and color and etc. So um, anything you do if you decide you don't want to do it you have your undo button up here and you can redo as well so I'm just going to undo that box so that it doesn't show up there. Okay next um, you want to know how to insert images there's a shortcut button right here to insert image or you can click on the insert button here and also choose image. You can choose from uploading an image from the computer you're working on or you can just search the web or you can insert it from your Google Drive if you have it. Um, these are typically the most common sources that people use. It's very easy to just click on search the web and then you get your Google search over here on the right so all you do is type in your subject matter um, like let's say I want to search for a picture of a cardinal excuse me typing from the side here and I can hit my enter button and it will give me a selection of pictures of that subject matter so I can choose any one I want whatever one I click on it's going to tell me I've selected it but um, I think I like that first one so I'm going to uncheck the second one and have just that one. And then I will click the insert option. And it puts the picture in the slide. So you can change the size of your picture. Always use corners so that you don't distort the image. And then you can just drag it and reposition it anywhere you want on the slide. Um, you can then make your pictures look more interesting. You don't have to leave them just as they are inserted. You can put a border on pictures you can crop your pictures let's say I don't want all of this space over here up here you have your crop button once you click on it you get these handles around the picture and you can click click your mouse right on the handle and drag it inward and it will crop it as you like then click off of the image it's still selected if you look to the left of the crop button over here you've got a border weight button if you choose a weight let's try maybe eight see how it puts a border around it here and then you can also choose a color for that border um, another thing you can do to enhance your photos a little bit is to add a drop shadow so to do that you want to click on your format option up here and go to format options and then your bar on the right hand side here changes you get lots of different possibilities of things you can do to your picture to make it look nicer um, a drop shadow is a common option i can just check it on and you can see that it's put a small little shadow on the picture or i can personalize those settings by twirling down that arrow and I can make the transparency a little bit less so it's darker and a little easier to see. I can also change the angle, which is the position of the imaginary light coming to shine on the photo and create the shadow. And then you can adjust your distance, which is how far you can see it comes away from the edge of the picture. 
and you can adjust the blur radius as well. That's how much it softens that shadow. So all of those things can be done and then you click off and your picture just looks a little bit fancier. Okay, so those are lots of things that you can do with pictures. If you also want all of your pictures to have those same sort of settings, you can easily copy all of that formatting with your paint format button, which looks very much like a paint roller. It's grayed out right now because I'm not clicked on anything. So what I'm gonna do to demonstrate how this works is I'm gonna insert another slide, insert new slide. So it's used this format. I'm gonna click here and I'm going to delete the text box. And let's say we're gonna insert another picture of a different bird. So I'll click on insert image, search the web. And let's say this time, uh, let's look for a meadow lark. Okay, so we've got meadow lark images here. I think I like this one. I'll click on it, insert it, and there's my picture and I can change the size again, I can crop it if I want, but what I want you to see is how easy it is to crop all of that formatting that I went to all the trouble of doing on the other picture. So I can click back to that slide with the picture I want, select the picture, and now you can see that this paint format roller is active. So I can click on it, then I click on my new slide, and I click on my new picture, and voila, it has applied all the same formatting to that picture. So you can easily do this to all of the photos on your slides. And you can do that as well with formatting of text if you decide to add drop shadows or outlines or anything like that. Um, you can insert shapes if you like. If you go to your toolbar up here, this button is your shape button. You can insert some, there's a whole selection of shapes here. You can insert arrows, you can insert callouts. There you go. So you draw your shape and if you'd like to type something in it, all you need to do is, I'm just hitting keys here because I'm not in front of the computer, but anything you type will show up right in the shape. And you can format that as well. You've got your border options, color options. This is your paint fill color button. So any of that, you're free to change. If you have um, a slideshow where you want people to be actually hearing things, you can insert audio files. So I'm going back to my cardinal slide and I'm gonna look for an audio file of what a cardinal sounds like. So I'm gonna to go to insert and audio and then here in the search bar, I'm gonna type cardinal bird sound. So make sure that the keyword search you're putting in makes sense. And then I can click my search button. So I've got a couple here. I'll just click one, choose it and select. And now you can see it has inserted an audio file here. And this would allow you to play it to see what it sounds like. If I click it, you can hear the audio file. It's very short, only three seconds long. This tells you how long it is. So you want to format this though. You don't want this to be showing while your slideshow is going on. So over here are your options to format that. Always check this so that it starts automatically unless there is a really good reason that you want it to wait for you to click to make that sound. It's best to have it run automatically. This is your volume. You can adjust that if you like. But right here, you want to click Hide Icon When Presenting so that we don't see this when we're actually presenting the slideshow. Okay, so simple. Um, let's see if there are any other adjustments here. You can do other drop shadows and things like that. Um, 
but there isn't really that much benefit to doing those things to a sound file because you're just hiding it anyway, usually. All right, so other than audio files, you can also insert video files. So if we were to go back to our meadowlark here, let's just say that we want not just a picture of a meadowlark, we want to have a, an actual video. So I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to go to my insert and I'm going to choose video this time. So I automatically get this YouTube search bar. So I will type in again, Meadowlark and hit my search bar. And here I have a video of the Western Meadowlark. I can choose any video I want. I'm just gonna click on this first one. And down here I hit the select button and it inserts the video for you. So over here, you can format that video where you can have it start and stop at a particular time. Some videos are really long and they would be just not appropriate to have in a slideshow playing out for the, the full amount of time. So what you can do is just key in on the part that you want to be heard. Like, um, let's say that I want this to start at the five second mark and I want it to only play for a few seconds so I can click over here and end at, um, let's say, uh, 20 seconds or 19 seconds. Um, and then if I choose auto play when presenting, it will automatically play as soon as I'm running the, the presentation of the video. So um, this will help key in on just the part that you want to hear. This. So you heard him, he's playing out the whole time, but what you wanna do is rehearse it first and this will tell you where to pick out the time that you want to set for start and stop over there, okay? And you, if you like, you can format the video also. You can format the video as well with um, borders and shadows and things like that. So once you have all of your content in your slides. You want to add as much motion as possible. It just makes it more interesting to watch. So the two kinds of motion that you can add are slide transitions, which is how it changes from one slide to the next, and then animation of individual text boxes or pictures or videos on the slides. So I'm going to go over here and close this format options and the themes so that I clean up my screen. And in order to do a slide transition, I could click back on my first slide here. And up here is the option for transition up near your menu items. If I click it, this appears over here, slide transition, and it shows you that I have none on here right now. So if I click on this none right here, this actually gives me my list of options. It's not as extensive as PowerPoint, but at least there is um, a couple of options that work fairly well. So uh, you can choose dissolve, fade, uh, let's say slide from left, just as a, anything to pick here. And you can adjust the speed that that happens with. Kind of uh, try to slow things down just a little bit because if they happen too fast, people can't read what's in your presentation. And then if you want that same transition on all of your slides, you can just click this button right here, apply to all slides and you're all set. Or you can apply different ones to each individual slide, whichever you prefer. Now down here, you, while you have this uh, motion option up here, and if you notice, once I clicked apply to all slides, over here on the left, I get this little icon appearing which shows that I've applied a transition of motion to the slides. Just a little tidbit. But if I want to animate individual items, I can click on them. I'm gonna choose, go back to the slide, and let's say I want this image to enter the slide in some way. So I'm gonna click over here on Add Animation, and then here are some options. I have Fade In, or I can choose a lot of different ones here. Let's say I have it, um, uh, fly in from the bottom. 
Now, this is key right here. You don't wanna leave this to be on the click because if you're trying to present something, it's better if you can speak and let your slideshow be running behind you. So if you choose here, either after previous or with previous, it will go automatically and it won't wait for anyone to be clicking a mouse. And then again, you can adjust the speed here. If you slow it down, it looks a little bit more interesting. And if you hit the play button, it will show you what that's gonna look like. It gives you a little rehearsal. There. Okay, so that's how you apply your animations. Um, when you change your backgrounds, sometimes you may have an instance where you want to have an entire image as the background. So you can do that. If I insert, um, see, I'm going to click on this slide. Oh, I have to hit the stop button over here. If you get frozen, it's probably because you forgot to hit stop in the animation settings. So I'm going to go back over here, click on the last slide and insert a new one. Insert new slide. And then let's say I want my background to be an image here. I can click on the background button again. And instead of clicking on color here, this is the same box we had earlier, I can choose an image and it's going to do the same thing. I can either upload a new picture, I can browse for a picture on my computer, go by URL, Google Drive. I think I have an image uh, that might look, let's see, all right, we'll put something in the background here. I'll click on that, open it, and then I click done, and the image is the entire background of the slide. So that's another option that you have for backgrounds. Um, if you want to add drop shadows, because sometimes if you put an image as a background, it's hard to see the text. Um, if, if I'm here, click to add, I'm just going to put the word title just so that I have something to work with. Um, I can click on format and then go to format options and again just like I had for the picture I have drop shadow settings that I can play with and often that makes the text a little bit easier to read can you see the shadow that's appearing on the words but I don't want my distance to be too far again so if I do that see I can just read my title a little bit better on a background image so that's a little trick that you can use now, when you are done with your slideshow, you can present the whole thing by clicking this present button up here. If you do this, it presents only from the slide that you're on. And then when to exit the present function, you click this little button here. I am on a MacBook right now, so all of my open and close is up here. If you're on a Chromebook or a PC, everything is over here. So I hope that didn't confuse everyone. Um, so if I want to present the whole thing, I would have to click back on slide one and then click present. And you can, I didn't go into all of the timing of everything, so I apologize for that. I'm just trying to get through the instruction here for you. But exit present and you're back to your slideshow. And when you are done, all you need to do is either click the share button here to share your slideshow with a teacher or anybody else you need to, or your, another option is to click on file and email as attachment, and then you would put in here the person you're emailing to, and if you have a message, you can type it here. You can also put the subject matter here because I did not yet title my presentation, which I can show you in a second. Um, but right here, if you're going to attach it as a PDF, it's really just going to be a picture. So if you want all of that animation and motion to um, come through in what you're emailing, you need to click here and make it sure that it's a PowerPoint, not a PDF. All right, so I'm going to cancel this because I'm not really going to send this to anyone. But right up here, if you click, that is where you would name your presentation. So if I named it demo, I just type it in and enter and now it is named and it is saved automatically in my Google Drive. 
So I hope that provided some information for you today and maybe you can go use Google Slides to present some projects for school or any other personal purpose you might have. So thanks for watching.